Welcome to part 2 of Playfair Cipher. Let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to Outcome number 1. We will recall the rules for encryption using Playfair ciphering technique. And outcome number 2. We will generate cipher text using Playfair ciphering technique. In the last presentation, we have seen the rules for encryption using Playfair ciphering technique. Also, we have seen how to create diagrams by inserting the filler character if there are repeating letters in the diagrams. In today's lecture, we will see how to generate the cipher text using Playfair ciphering technique. Before stepping into the topic of the day, that is the generation of cipher text using Playfair ciphering technique, let's revisit the last lecture briefly. In the last lecture, we have seen how to insert the keyword in the Playfair cipher matrix, that is the phi cross phi matrix. After filling the keyword, then we need to insert the remaining alphabets which are not there in the keyword. So this we have seen elaborately in the last lecture, and also we have seen the rules. Using this phi cross phi matrix which is filled up with the keyword and the remaining alphabets only, we are going to generate the cipher text. For generating the cipher text, we need to follow some rules. Rule number one is when the plain text is given, we need to create diagrams. And rule number two is in the diagrams, if we find some repeating letters, we need to use filler characters in order to break the repeating letters. And then we'll be going for the encryption. Then we will take individual diagrams. And then these individual diagrams are then referred to this table and the position of the diagrams will be noted. In a diagram, we'll be obviously having two alphabets. These two alphabets on this table may be on the same row or on the same column or may be on a different row, different column. So in such a case, we need to find out where the diagrams are actually located. In case if the diagrams are located in the same column, then we need to move down in order to generate the cipher text. In case if we are encountering the last position, we need to wrap around. Say for example, we are at V. And we are at the bottom of the table, right? And there are no more alphabets after this V. So we need to wrap around. So what is next to V? Just rotate. We'll be getting O, right? So this is wrapping around. Anyway, don't worry about this. I'll be explaining this elaborately when we see the example. In case if the alphabets in the diagrams are appearing in the same row, that is rule number 4. In that case, say for example BD, then we need to move right in order to generate the ciphertext. Say for example, if we are encountering BD, D is the last one. For generating the ciphertext for D, we need to wrap around. Just wrap around. What is the next one? It is C. So just a rotation. Just wrapping it around. So that what is next to D? It is C. What is next to H? It is Y. What is next to P? It is Q. In case if the alphabets in the diagram are in the same row, we need to move right. In case if they are in the same column, we need to move down. In case if the alphabets in the diagrams are in different row, different column, say if the diagram is CS. C is here, S is here. Can you see C is in this row and S is in this row. At the same time, C is in a different column and S is also in a different column. In this case, we need to create a rectangle like this and then we need to swap. Don't worry about this. We are going to see that now. Let's understand the rules by doing the encryption process. So in order to understand the rules, let's take the first example, attack, which we have seen in the last lecture, how to create diagrams for this word attack. Attack is actually having the diagram AT. T A C K. And is there any repeating letters? No. Now, how to generate ciphertext for this? In order to generate the ciphertext, we need the table, right? So, I am bringing the table here. Yeah, the table is before us. Now, we know what is the first diagram A T, then T A, then C K. So, we are going to do encryption as per the diagram. Firstly, we are going to encrypt A T, then we are going to encrypt T A, and then we are going to encrypt C K. Let's start the encryption process for the first diagram which is AT. Where is A? A is here. Where is T? T is here. Are they in the same row? No, they are in different rows. Are they in the same column? No, they are in different columns. So obviously it is according to rule number 5, we are creating the rectangle. Now A and T, just create a rectangle according to this. In case if the diagram is FW, then we are going to create the rectangle like this. Please make a note of this. We are going to create a rectangle like this. So A is here, T is here. So the rectangle is made. Now, as per rule number 5, we need to swap in order to generate the ciphertext. So first we are going to encrypt A and then T, right? A is here and T is here. Let's revisit the rule. So if it is a rectangle, we need to use this approach. Whatever at the end of the rectangle, that is going to be the ciphertext. Suppose, if this is the plain text we are going to encrypt, then whatever is at the last of this rectangle, this is the ciphertext. In case if we are going to encrypt this, then whatever at the last, it is the ciphertext. 
I'll just explain it with our example. In this example, we know A is here and T is here. So we are going to first encrypt A followed by T. What is the last element in this rectangle in that row? For A, it is R, right? So R is here. And for encrypting T, T is here. What is the last element in that row of the rectangle? It is yes, right? So A is encrypted as R and T is encrypted as yes. So what is the ciphertext for AT? It is RS. Do you understand? It is RS. If things are not clear, let's see the second one. So we are going to encrypt the next diagram TA. Where is T? Here it is. Where is A? Here it is. Just create a rectangle. So 3A, we are creating the rectangle like this. Then we need to first encrypt T followed by A. So as per the rule, T is here. What is in the last of this rectangle in that row? T is encrypted as S and A is encrypted as R. So please make a note of this. T is encrypted as S and A is encrypted as R. So TA is encrypted as SR. Please do remember one thing. A, T, T, A are different. So here it is RS and here it is SR. Right. Let's take the third diagram which is CK. Where is C? Here it is. Where is K? Here it is. Right. So C is here, K is here, so we are going to create the rectangle like this. So as per the rule, what is there in the last row of the rectangle? D. Firstly, we should encrypt C followed by K. So first C followed by K. So C is encrypted as D and K is encrypted as E. Let's witness that. Yes, C is encrypted as D and K is encrypted as E. So the ciphertext for CK is DE. So the plain text is attack and the cipher text is R S S R D E. Let's take another example. In this example, we are taking the keyword as mosque. So we will split the diagrams accordingly. So the diagrams are M O S Q U E. And we will encrypt the first diagram which is M O. M is here, O is here. So we will create the rectangle. Now as per rule, are they in the same row or in the same column or in different row, different column? They are in the same row, isn't it? So these diagrams are in the same row. Let's see the rule now. If they are in the same row, then we need to move right, right? So this is the logic. So there is no swapping. Swapping is only when it is in different row, different column. But in this case, the diagrams are in the same row. So we need to find whatever is there in the right hand side. Let's see the example now. We know MO is the plain text letters we are going to encrypt and MO are in the same row. So as per the rule, whatever is on the right hand side, that is going to be the cipher text. What is next to M in the right hand side? It is O. What is the letter that is right to the plain text letter O? It is N. Please move right. So for M, it is O. For O, it is N. Please make a note of this keenly. So M is encrypted as O and O is encrypted as N. So the cipher text for M, O is O N. Can you understand this? If not, let's see the second diagram. It is SQ. Where is S? Here it is. Where is Q? Here it is. So we are going to encrypt SQ. So as per the rule, are they in the same row or same column or different row, different column? They are in the same row. So we are going to encrypt SQ, right? What is the alphabet that is right to S? It is T. And what is the alphabet or letter that is right to Q? It is S. So S is replaced as T and Q is replaced as yes. So the answer is T yes. In case if you are going to encrypt X, Z. So whatever is next to X towards right, this is the cipher text for X. And for Z, whatever is there on the right, nothing is there, just wrap around. What is next to Z? It is U. So Z should be encrypted as U. Always remember this rule. If they are in the same row, take the element what is right to the element that you are referring to. If they are in the same column, let's see that now. U, E. U is here, E is here. Let's put the rectangle now. Now, are they in the same row? No. Are they in the same column? Yes. So obviously they are not in different row, different column. When the diagrams are in the same column, what is the logic? We will see the rule now. When the diagrams are appearing in the same column, we need to move down. In case if we are at the bottom, we need to wrap around. Let's see the example now. We are dealing with this U, E. So U, and then E. Firstly, we should encrypt for U and then E. And since these diagrams are in the same column, we need to move down. So firstly, we will encrypt U. U, whatever is there, when you move down, nothing is there. So what we need to do? Wrap around. What is the next letter? M. So U is encrypted as M. 
and E is encrypted as L because the letter that is below E is L. So, we need to go down. Always remember if the diagrams are in the same column, we need to move down. So, when you move down, next to U is M and next to E is L. So, the cipher text for U, E is M, L. I hope you are clear with this. Anyway, in the next presentation, we will take a different example, different keyword and we will work it out manually. So, the plain text for this example is mask and the cipher text is O, N, T, S, M, L. So, anyway, in the next presentation, I will explain you why it is referred as a multi-letter encryption by just comparing the cipher text with the Caesar cipher, shift cipher and the mono-alphabetic substitution. Before we conclude, let's see the rapid fire activity. Here is the rapid fire activity. The table is given. The keyword we know, it is monarchy. Just do it fast. This is the activity for you. I am not going to work out this. You are going to do it. Pause this video for a while and do this rapid fire activity. And that's it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.